also says blind lead the blind they both fall in ditch so uh, but uh, turn with me I'm going to be going two places first place is Romans 12 verse 1 second place will be Hebrews 12 29 Romans 12 and 1, Hebrews 12 and 29. Y'all ready? Okay. Romans 12 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Hebrews 12, 29. For our God is a consuming fire. Y'all can be seated. Tuesday night, Sister Jamie wasn't able to make water, she made water. Wednesday day, five minutes after I left the shop up Gilbert, Holy Ghost fell in there, one fell out in the spirit in the floor, one was saved. Last night, an ear that was closed came open. I'm anxious to see what's going to happen here tonight. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. I'll, I'm going to get going here in a minute. But God spoke to me a few weeks ago. I even told Brother Larry about it. And I was getting in the refrigerator to get a drink of milk. The Lord stopped me and he said, on the 6th of April, I'm going to do something miraculous. I don't know. All I know is he don't lie. I don't know if it'll be here. I don't even know if it'll be any of you all. But I know what God told me. So let's just go ahead and give him a hand clap of praise for what he's going to do. He, 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 can't, he can't lie. So somewhere, whether it be in this building or in another, somebody is getting a miracle tonight. But I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. For our God, is a consuming fire. I'd like to speak to you if the Lord would allow me on the thought. You can't have Pentecost without cost. Everybody wants to run. Everybody
everybody wants to jump. Everybody wants to shout. But they don't want to pay no price. That's why when they leave here, it stays here and it don't go home with them. Which is why in the middle of the week, when they can't darken the church house door, the devil's boxing him like one of them little blow-up, beat-up things. You remember when he was a kid that sand in the bottom of them? And the devil will just jack their jaws all week long. And the next time the service comes, they come in here, they sit down, oh, woe is me, poor me, why ain't God moving? Get the fire in your life and he'll move for you. You see, without a sacrifice, you can't have fire unless it's in judgment. Fire fell in the word for two, one, and two reasons. One was to consume a sacrifice. The other was to pour out judgment. Sodom and Gomorrah, they went in there. They tried to get them to straighten up. They done this. They done that. God poured out fire. Psalms 51, 17 says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. You know what's wrong today, Brother J.R.? People do wrong and it don't break their heart. Sister Pam, God is love. He's full of mercy. The world has become so drunk on his mercy that they're staggering all around in sin and they can't get out of it. Our flesh is sin. How was, how is, how did sin come in the world? By, we ain't going to talk about what, what the apple was or this, that, the other. We ain't opening that can of words. But all that I know is when they seen whatever it was that they seen, it tickled their fancy. They liked it a little bit. And all oh, things ain't changed, Brother Larry, since the garden. But when the Lord comes walking in our lives, we're like, oh, oh, it was the woman's fault. But I noticed something. He said, and you gave her to me. They all the time want to blame God. Why ain't you blessing me, God? Why ain't you living right? I told y'all the other night, I'm so sick of looking at the church and not seeing the church. Tired of it. But we have to have a separation of our flesh and our spirit. Instead, the Bible says to walk in the spirit that you fulfill not the lust of the flesh. But a lot of people are walking in the flesh so they can't get a hold of what they need in their spirit. There's a, a separation that has to take place. Y'all ready for this? John the Baptist spoke of one that was
but baptized with Holy Ghost and with fire. And I like how he said it because he said it. <laughs> Whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor. And he would gather his wheat into the garner and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Let me give y'all a little lesson. The wheat is covered by a little hard shell called the chaff. The chaff is one with the wheat. The, it covers the wheat. So therefore the wheat is on the, on the inside of the chaff. Before the grain can be used, the husk must be removed. This process is done by milling or pounding. I wish people would quit using the word as a hammer. Well, honey, Jeremiah said, it's not my word like a hammer that breaketh rock into pieces. I don't know about you, but I need a little hammering sometime. <laughs> the remaining chaff is... <laughs> oh, Lord, I love you. The remaining chaff is removed by a process called winnowing. Traditionally done by repeatedly tossing the grain into a light wind which gradually, gradually blows the lighter chaff away. If they let the hammer break them apart and come in here and let the wind move and just blow it away. Oh, my Lord. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, what we could see go on. Separation of spirit and of flesh. Fifteenth chapter of the book of Genesis, I believe it is. Abraham makes a sacrifice and he cuts it, cuts it in the middle and a deep sleep begins to come over him. <laughs> and he, he wakes up and he sees a fire that walks between the sacrifice and consumes both part. Fire is a purifier. During the Civil War when they get shot and they get cut, they take them into the doctor tent, they take the iron, they stick it in a fire, they touch it to the wound and seal it up. Don't stay home because your feelings got hurt. Come and let the fire cleanse you and make you whole. But you can't have Pentecost without the cost. The sacrifices are God, of God, are a broken heart, the contrite spirit. The disciples, they walked with Jesus. formed a bond with Jesus in 
front of their eyes. He performed miracles. He opened the blinded eyes. He opened the deaf ears. He made the dumb to speak, the lame to leap. Oh, my God. Oh, but one day, or one night, rather, in a garden, he was led away from them. Just like us, when we feel like he ain't around, we either deny him or we run off somewhere. But you know, there was one of them boys stuck it out. Went right there with him. Oh, John the Beloved. We want to pre preach and build up Peter because of Pentecost. If it wasn't for people like John, we'd have never had a Pentecost. Never left him. Watched him be beaten, mocked, made fun of, spit upon. Sat right there. As they nailed him to the cross, was right there by old mommy Mary. Comforting. <laughs> Today we're like, oh, bless God, I ain't got time for her. I got problems of my own. But these boys were, they were left alone. The Christ was gone. And he reappeared. And one of the one of the gospels said one day he stepped through the wall. <laughs> the door stepped through the wall. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. You got Jesus in you, don't you? Well, how come we pray for him for 30 nights and they can't get it? Give you a newsflash. A lot of the times it ain't their fault. It's us. Our hearts are not broken. Our spirits are not contrite to know that these people need this more than they need the next breath that they take. It's the only thing that's going to separate them from the world. Our hearts don't break for them anymore. Shoot. Our hearts don't even break for the world anymore. Our nation has been all jacked up by all form of evil. But we think we're too good for our heart to break and to gather at an altar and to cry out to God that he had mercy upon this nation. When I was a kid, the lost couldn't get to the altar because the saints were pouring out their heart and crying to God. And now the preacher.
you'll say you need anything, come to the front. Oh, gosh. People have got so much pride that they can't step forward and let go and let God and receive what they need to make it in this world. And the church will cry over a news story, but won't cry over the people that are sitting in the church that are broken and needing a touch from God. Addicts and prostitutes. I ain't talking about this church, so don't take it this way. Coming into the church, and we snub them and we look at them. Like, what are you doing here? But go home and watch a Maxwell House commercial where a son comes home from war and bow like a baby. Where is your heart broken for those that need the Lord? I'm just as guilty as anybody else. We'll sit downstairs two and three o'clock in the morning. God, pour out your spirit. And he's like, I already have. I'll give it to you, now you pour it out to them. resurrection he walked again with them 40 days oh just like old times <laughs> Peter me. Oh yeah, Lord. Go feed me. 
church today don't want to feed nobody. I ain't talking about a soup kitchen. You want to know how I know? Because we stay behind four walls. Go out into the highways. Compel them to come in. That ain't, won't you come to church with me? We've gotten afraid to tell people they're going to hell. A lot of churches that they are afraid to tell them because they're afraid they walk out the door and they won't be that in the offering plate. Money or no money, if you're sinning, you're going to hell. And I ain't just talking about homosexuals. You lie, you're going to hell. You cuss, you're going to hell. You can't show kindness, you're going to hell. And we think we've got this all together. This might be why a lot of people don't like me. But somebody asked me the other day, Brother Jason, why can't we get people saved? I said, until we get our own self fixed, we ain't going to get them saved. They look at us and say, well, if they're going to make it. And that's it. We give, we think they just say that because that, but we give them a reason to say it. Something has to be showing it to them. Because if they see the light, they be running to it like a moth to a flame. See, that's another thing about fire. tracks when they heard about that wild eyed crazy man dressed in camel skin that ate locusts and honey down by the river of Jordan baptizing them to repent they came from all around to see who he was and one day they were marveling at him and he said behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He was not the light, <laughs> but was sent to bear witness to the light. If we would begin to bear witness, ooh, we'd go to the local 7 Eleven and we'd hand out CDs. We'd stand. At least I'm talking about myself, too. We'd get out on the street corner at the courthouse and we'd sing. They used to do it. We've heard it 
several times here tonight. God don't change. Well, tell me where the problem's at. Our heart is not broken. Our spirit is not contrite. If it was, we would be setting the world on fire. In the book of Acts, when they came looking for these people, they went into the house of Jason. They said, these men... That have turned the world upside down. He walked with them for 40 days after his resurrection. And on a mountaintop, he left them again. But before he left them, he said, you go down into Jerusalem and you carry. after Passover walked with them 40 days so about well you got the three days it was seven days they tarried ten till nine we Y'all think I just come over here and tell this to you? I say it at my church too. Shame on us. We want to change the world, but want to get to Wendy's before it closes? Shame on us. <laughs> Proverbs says. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Ooh. Ooh. Ye are the light of the world. Let's see any sin upon the hill cannot be hid. Neither does a man light up a candle or put it under a bushel, but he sets it out uh, on an extent gather that makes the whole house see it. Hold your candles up. We've got away from simplicity and the world is dying and going to hell because we got to be so sophisticated about everything. Oh, yeah. And when they told me hickory dickory dock, I knew the mouse ran up the clock. They didn't have to dissect the mouse for me, tell me what color it was, what species it is. I knew that that thing would run up the clock. to go set up Grandpappy's tent. They didn't say I gotta go water Daddy lost camels. They tarried. They wasn't worried about getting fired from a job. They wasn't worried about money.
they tarried. And when the sound of the rushing mighty wind filled the room, ooh, that was payday. For after that moment, they're never the same. They sold everything that they had. They put it all in together. And they gave it away. It wasn't like me, Larry, Jr., and Joey putting all our money in a pot and splitting it up among one another. They gave it away. judgment they still come in handed the money that's all you got yep bow dead <laughs> they lied to the Holy Ghost How many times have we lied to the Holy Ghost? I can recall a few nights hanging over the toilet saying, God, if you'll help me, I'll never do this again. fast today. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Lord, there have you pizza in the work today, and I love it. Where's that separation at? Where's that separation at? Your body, a living sacrifice. I see. I think that man. Just think of that. Told him, you know, he, he set it up and he, he he gave them all these different animals and told them all these different things to do and everything. This animals for this sin. This animals for this sin. You use this for this offering and that for that offering. When I'm pleased with it, I'll consume it with fire. When he's pleased with it, my God, why is the church on fire? Because we have spot and we have blemish and we want to walk around pointing out everybody else's and we don't want to take the soap and wash it off our own. <laughs> I believe Jesus might have even talked about that when he talked about the beam and the mold in the eye. People don't like that Sermon on the Mount anymore. Well, let me put it this way. The church don't like that Sermon on the Mount anymore. Why? Because it steps all over us. But that's where it's at. That's where he told them. This is how I want you to be. This is what I expect of you. Love your brother. As you love yourself. We ain't got no 
don't fire in the church today because we have no fire in our life. When we begin to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is our reasonable service, then our God that is a consuming fire will light it in us in a way You know, he said, these works that you see me do, you want to do them greater because I go away into the Father. Even, think about that. He stepped off the boat. The devil's run to him. He didn't run to the devil. The devil run to him. Begging him. Begging. Don't, don't send us away. Put us in them pigs over there. That's the same power he gave us. You read the woman with the spirit of divinity. I can't even say the word right now. I'm so somewhere else. But Paul simply turned and said, Come out of her, thou unclean spirit. And it went. There wasn't a 45 minute shot. No, 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 no. That was not taking place. Come out of her, thou unclean spirit. That's the power that he gave us. I said it at Trace Book, I'll say it here. They laid the people in the street so the shadow of Peter could cross them and heal them. Why ain't my shadow healing people? What kind of light are you walking in? What kind of light am I walking in? Because my shadow ain't doing nothing for him either. This is a mirror. It is a mirror. If you can't hold this up and see you in it, this is where you need to be. We have got to get this right. Our hands going to be clean on the day of judgment? Or are they going to be dripping with somebody's blood because we couldn't get it right? That scares me to death. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. can't have Pentecost without the cost. There's no way possible. Those boys paid the price. James, I believe it was, that they threw him off of the building and he landed down in the street. They let him 
by about, and they crucified him upside down. Andrew, they put him on an X. They crucified him. They all died of martyrdom. Except for old John the Beloved. See, that's the problem. We want the power of Pentecost, but if we don't want the pure heart. When it was the pure heart, the one that laid upon the breast of the Christ, That they pulled him. <laughs> Put him in a batch of boiling oil. And he couldn't die. They got so fed up with him, they poked his eyeballs out, stuck him on an island somewhere, and he had vision like he never had before. Spirit and flesh. They put his eyes out. And he can see. <laughs> we can't see because we look with the wrong eyes. We like the, my beloved is mine. And I am his. But we don't want to talk about the eyes of the dove. I pray all the time, God, Lord Jesus, let me see people as you see them. Let my heart break, Lord, for what breaks yours. Let me love like you love. Boy, you talking about a love. I like how he said it. That he loves us like the Father loved him from the foundation of the world in our vilest spot in our life, in our most wicked moment of our life. His love was never ending toward us. about that close from the finish line. We got about that far to go. Are they going to put us to death? Or they just going to have to put us on an island somewhere because they can't do nothing to us. And I love Jesus. This come out nothing like I intended it for. And I'm so glad. You know why? Because that know, lets me know that I didn't have a hand in it. But we've got to get this right. You know, we forget, we forget, Sister Johnny, that we're going to stand in judgment too. We forget that. There's a cost to this. Endure hardness. As a good soldier. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Endure what? The hardness. Sometimes, Brother J.R., I don't understand what 
he does in my life. But it's not up to me to understand that. The Bible tells me his ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. I'm just trying to learn, Sister Pam, that when I hit a current in this river, to just go with the current. When I hear waters, just float around, waiting on the current to come get me. Because he told Jeremiah, he said, for I know the plans that I have towards you. It's his plan, not mine. But I'm so thankful that he's good and that he's merciful toward us. Because in all reality, there's times in our lives we should have been like them out in the wilderness and been consumed. The fire come through the whole camp and wipe us out. But I'm so grateful. He said, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. But yet we'll sit there and say, yeah, there they are again. Wonder how long they're going to stay this time. Instead of thinking like that, let's try to think of a reason to keep them. Try to show them something worth sticking around for. We've got to get like this. Not just in our garment, but in the very fiber of our being. We've got to begin to look like Him, to think like Him, to walk like Him, to talk like Him. Then we'll have our Pentecost. See, He was gone, but He knew. That they were going to send something back. He was going to send them something back that was going to make them be him. We've got it. I just want to know how come it only shows up at church time. How come we ain't that Walmart, sha na na? Laying hands on the people in the wheelchairs. Why we ain't, why ain't we at the hospital rebuking cancer? We're scared. We are scared of a lawsuit. Scared of being looked at, kicked out somewhere. Scared of getting the cops called on us. They come and let them away, put them in prison. They just got in prison. They sung, they shout, they had prayer meeting. The doors flung open. Silas was. <laughs> in the book of Psalms, the Bible says the Lord sits in thick darkness. Nobody wants to get into the darkness where he's at. But it was in the darkness <laughs> where Paul and Silas was <laughs> that he opened their doors. When you get into where he's at. Man, oh me. Turning the world upside down. If we 
we would get to where he wants us to be, there wouldn't be a methadone clinic. There wouldn't be an AA. There wouldn't be a dialysis center. They'd be the church. They'd be They'd be, take them over there to Hamilton's Creek. Take them over there to Woodville. Take them over there to Orville. Because they got something. They got something in their hands that when they lay them on the sick, they recover. <laughs> They something over there, Sister Katie. They some. They some there. That they take them old lunatic people in, and the devils just run out of them. You know what the problem today is? We don't think that it can happen. That's why the sissy just stood up and read. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. How many want that fire? Well, this ain't no trick question. Well, I tell you what we're going to do. some prayer. And we're going to pray. And you have no prayer line just yet. We're going to stand. We're going to join hands one with another. And we're going to pray and that we're going to believe that, Brother Hunter, after this night, there ain't a one of us under the sound of my voice going to be the same as we was when we walked in here. God is ready for this. We're sitting around waiting on God, and the whole point of the matter is He's waiting on us. Now, I got a question. How many is in agreement with me here tonight? Now, look, 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 everybody keep your hands held up. Now, I want everybody to look around. Okay. You see all these hands? Okay. The Bible says if two. I got news for you. It don't take no more than you and Jesus. For if it's you and him, there's two. Two agree upon touching any one thing. It shall be done. There's a lot of people in here. I'm just going to be flat out honest with you. They come up here and honor me and drink this because they're like, I ain't drinking after nobody. <laughs> what would you have done at the Last Supper?
going, we're going to join hands. We're going to pray. Grab these kids' hands. They need that fire just as much as you need it. And listen, I don't want you to be like, Cry out to God. Cry out like this is the last chance you are ever going to have to plead with Him. Because it very well may be. Amen. 